Welcome to our Canada and the World Show. Today, we have some thrilling updates for you. First up, Uruguay and Colombia have announced their starting lineups for the Copa America semi-final. With Ronald Araujo on the bench for Uruguay and James Rodriguez leading Colombia, it's set to be an electrifying match that determines who will face Argentina in the final. Next, in the world of entertainment, Rebel Wilson's directorial debut film, The Deb, has been withdrawn from the Toronto International Film Festival amid accusations of Guardian, the Copa America 2024 semi-final between Uruguay and Colombia promises to be an electrifying encounter, with both teams fielding strong lineups. Uruguay, under Marcelo Bielsa's tactical guidance, has made three crucial changes, bringing in Sebastian Cáceres, José María Jiménez, and Rodrigo Bentancur. The passionate fans from both sides are ready to cheer their teams on, with colorful displays of patriotism evident in the stadium. Colombia, led by the resurgent James Rodriguez, who is playing at a level reminiscent of his 2014 World Cup form, is eager to reach their third Copa America final. The stakes are high, as the winner will face Argentina, who recently defeated Canada, in the final. The anticipation is palpable, with no extra time in play, meaning a draw will lead straight to a penalty shootout, adding to the drama of the night. Yahoo US, as the semi-final clash between Uruguay and Colombia approaches, both teams have announced their starting eyes. Uruguay's Ronald Araujo finds himself on the bench due to a muscle injury sustained in the quarterfinal against Brazil, while Rodrigo Bentancur steps into the starting lineup. For Colombia, James Rodriguez continues to lead the charge, with Jefferson Lerma returning to the midfield after suspension. The match is not just a battle for a spot in the final against Argentina but also a chance to avoid the third-place playoff against Canada. The excitement is building as fans eagerly await the showdown, knowing that every move on the pitch could be decisive in determining who advances to the grand finale. The Toronto star, in a setback for Canada, Alfonso Davies' leg injury, sustained during the semi-final loss to Argentina, has been confirmed as non-severe by coach Jesse Marsh. An X-ray revealed no serious damage, but Davies' availability for the third-place game against either Uruguay or Colombia remains uncertain. Marsh praised the team's progress, highlighting the significant strides made under his leadership, despite the challenges faced. He emphasized the need for improved finishing, citing numerous missed opportunities in the tournament. With Davies playing a pivotal role for both Bayern Munich and the Canadian national team, his potential absence could impact Canada's performance. However, Marsh remains optimistic about the team's trajectory, confident that they are on the right path to becoming a formidable force in international football. The Sydney Morning Herald reports that Rebel Wilson has publicly criticized the producers of her directorial debut, The Deb, after the film was pulled from the Toronto International Film Festival. In an Instagram post to her 11 million followers, Wilson accused producers Amanda Ghost, Gregor Cameron, and Vince Holden of inappropriate behavior and embezzling funds, which the producers have denied. The Deb, an Australian musical comedy about two teenage girls attending a debutante ball, was set to be the festival's closing night film. The movie, based on a musical by Hannah Riley and Megan Washington, was filmed in Sydney and rural NSW. Wilson, who has faced controversy following her memoir Rebel Rising, expressed her devastation over the film's blocked premiere. The Toronto Star reveals that Costco will increase its annual membership fees starting September 1. Canadian members holding individual, business, or business add-on memberships will see a $5 increase to $65 while executive memberships will rise by $10 to $130, with an increase in maximum annual rewards. U.S. members will experience the same fee hikes. The changes will affect around 52 million memberships, over half of which are executive memberships. This announcement came as Costco reported its June sales results, signaling a significant shift for the wholesale retailer's customer base. CNN reports that Mod Pizza, known for its customizable pizza offerings, has been acquired by Elite Restaurant Group in a bid to avoid bankruptcy. The terms of the deal were not disclosed. Mod Pizza, which has over 540 locations across the US and Canada, had been considering bankruptcy due to financial struggles exacerbated by inflation and reduced consumer spending. The chain recently closed 44 restaurants and appointed Beth Scott as the new CEO in January. Founder Scott and ally Svensson have transitioned to new roles within the company, with Scott Svensson becoming the executive chairperson. The acquisition aims to stabilize Mod Pizza's capital structure and ensure its continued operation amidst industry challenges. The Toronto Star. 
Watching Canada face off against Argentina in the Copa America semifinals felt akin to a classic hockey underdog story, reminiscent of when Canadian hockey teams play against smaller nations. For once, Canadians found themselves in the role of the underdog, facing a soccer powerhouse. Despite the daunting challenge, the Canadian team, led by Jesse Marsh, showed no fear and played with determination. They had their moments early in the game but ultimately fell short due to Argentina's superior skill. Marsh emphasized the need for Canada to develop its young players earlier and more intensively to compete at the highest levels. The experience was invaluable, and the future looks promising as Canada continues to make significant strides in international soccer. The Toronto Star Canada's Olympic men's basketball team is gearing up for the Paris Games with a roster full of talent and ambition. Coach Jordi Fernandez outlined the team's strategy of playing fast and physical, daring opponents to keep up. The final roster includes eight players from the bronze medal team at the 2023 FIBA World Cup, bolstered by the addition of stars like Jamal Murray and Kem Birch. The team exudes a strong sense of unity and sacrifice, with players like Melvin Jim providing veteran leadership. The tough selection process saw some talented players miss out, but the chosen squad is well equipped to challenge for an Olympic medal. Fernandez is confident in the team's chemistry and readiness, highlighting the importance of experience and strategic fit. The Toronto Star in Surrey, British Columbia, a contentious dispute over the city's police force has concluded with an agreement to transition from the RCMP to the Independent Surrey Police Service by November 29. Solicitor General Mike Farnworth announced the $250 million, 10-year deal, which ensures no additional police taxes for residents during the transition period. This resolution follows a prolonged period of legal battles and public disagreements, with Surrey's council initially resisting the move. Mayor Brenda Locke eventually conceded to a judicial review affirming the province's authority to enforce the transition. The agreement includes a financial safety net, with an extra $20 million over five years to cover potential salary disparities between the new local force and the RCMP. Washington Post, Greg Berhalter is out as the U.S. men's national soccer team coach a year after his reappointment and following a disappointing Copa America performance. The U.S. Soccer Federation announced his firing, with sporting director Matt Crocker leading the search for a new coach. Berhalter, who had a 44-17-13 record and led the team to the 2022 World Cup round of 16, faced challenges including a domestic assault incident from his college days and a rift with a player's parents. Despite high expectations with a talented roster, the team faltered at Copa America failing to advance past the group stage after losses to Panama and Uruguay. The USSF aims to hire a new coach by September, considering candidates like LAFC Steve Chirundolo and Columbus Crew's Wilfried Nancy, while dreaming big with names like Jurgen Klopp. The decision to rehire Berhalter last year came amid a messy situation involving midfielder Gio Reyna's parents and an investigation into Berhalter's past. The U.S. team, despite regional successes, couldn't deliver on the international stage, leading to Berhalter's dismissal. The USSF sees the upcoming 2026 World Cup as a crucial opportunity to boost the sport's popularity and achieve on-field success, emphasizing the need for a coach who can transform potential into performance. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email. Got a question in your mind? We'll find the answer, we'll be kind. Encyclopedia on everything. Life and love. Got the facts in one great place. 
for kids and grown-ups too We've got the A to Z for you Kids and grown 